Okay, I removed uh, my focuser from the back of the telescope, but I, I need to remove the focuser tilt plate now, so that's why I've marked the location uh, here in, in red tape so that when I remove it and I, I reinstall it, I will put it back in the same position. That's my plans anyway. Next I remove the screws from the base of the um, optical tube all around. Now with all eight screws removed from the base of the telescope, I'm just going to lift the optical tube off straight up like that till it clears the baffle tube and I can set it over here. Next we just unscrew the baffle tube from its base. So, next we're going to remove two set screws on this collar, one here and one here. And for, for that I use a 2 millimeter hex tool. Very careful with these set screws that they don't fall on the mirror. Okay, there's the second one. Okay, it's best to remove the mirror cell by first tightening the rubber O-ring adapter because we don't want to turn the mirror cell upside down and remove the primary collimation screws because then the mirror would, would fall forward. So we're going to remove the, the, the primary collimation screws with the mirror cell and the primary mirror in the vertical position. Okay, there's one. Okay, I'm I'm removing the lockdown screws first, the larger ones. And the third and final screw, I'm going to lean, lean it backwards because when I take this screw out, it will most likely come loose of the mirror, the back of the telescope. Okay, so there we have it loose. 
So now if we lift the mirror cell out of the rear of the telescope, we can see that we had three springs on those large hold down screws. One, two, three. I noticed that the inside of, of this housing has some dust in it, including a spider web there, so I'm going to clean that out well now. So I just vacuumed out the rear cell and, uh, and I wiped it off with paper towels and distilled water and so it's very clean at this time. Okay, one thing I want to check is my three hold down clips so that they're not pressing on the mirror and so I'm using a business card and that's pretty tight there and this one as well yeah it doesn't slide in under the clips easily so I'm going to adjust this so I have a bigger gap you know between the front of the mirror and these hold down clips because they could be causing pinched op optics resulting in triangular stars so what I'm going to do next is remove these hold down clips and they take a, a five millimeter hex key there's one Okay, so I lift the hold down clip upward away from the mirror and so there's the second hold down clip. Now these hold down clips are only on here for safety purposes. Um, really the mirror is held in place by this rubber o-ring plate. So there we have all three clips removed. And I am, am planning to reinstall them, but I will lift them up at least a business card uh, th in thickness. Next I will remove the rubber o-ring adapter plate. Okay, there it is, off. For my 12 inch RC, there are three ways that the primary mirror is supported on its edges. And one is here, second is here, and the third is there. And what they've done is drilled a hole in the mirror cell and they've sprayed in black RTV and so what we're going to do is use a flathead razor knife and separate that silicone glue or adhesive from the edge of the mirror itself so when we move the primary mirror that silicone glue will still be in place
but we won't have a permanent attachment to the edge of the mirror because that could be a source of pinch optics just from the silicone itself. So I got that one done pretty well. So I'm going to move on to the next one, which is right here. Okay, so I have two done, and the third glop of uh, black RTV is right here. So I'm just separating the black RTV from the edge of the primary mirror. So we have all three done. So now if we use our fingers to slowly raise the primary mirror up, yeah, I'm moving it very slowly. Yeah, now it's removed from the cell, so I just hold it on the edges, and I'll place it to the side. There's our mirror. Right away we can see the three um, pieces of quirk that are supporting the back of the, the primary mirror and we're going to scrape those off next and instead install 12 velcro pads now i am going to use a razor knife to remove these cork strips that are glued on Okay, so there's one cork strip removed, so I just have to do the two other ones. This isn't the best razor knife, but it's the razor blade itself is very sharp. Okay, so there's the second one removed. Okay, so there's the third a cork strip removed. Now I have some small pieces of cork that weren't removed completely with that razor knife, so I'm going to use a, a chisel razor to scrape the remaining cork particles at all three locations.
Okay, so we got the worst of the cork off. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm using 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just putting that on a paper towel and removing the adhesive glue that was holding the cork strips on. So that's one. Here's the second. And this is the third. Uh, the Velcro pads that I bought are uh, industrial strength, low profile, and they come 10 in a pack, and each oval is one inch by three quarter inch. And here's what they look like when you open and take them out of the package. So I'm going to install those now. So uh, I'm cutting the Velcro ovals like this and my plan is to put them in this position just on the edge of this uh, black square and so that will be radial uh, in position and this one I'm going to uh, place just above that square metal pad and I'm going to place it horizontally like that and I'll repeat that um, one, two, three, four, five other times so that we have a total of 12 uh, Velcro pads holding the mirror in place. Before I uh, glue the uh, Velcro ovals in place, I'm going to wash the mirror cell at all locations I'm going to be placing a pad. So I'm using isopropyl alcohol. Just doing a quick wipe. And that's very good right there. I decided that I would mount these uh, Velcro ovals with the fuzzy side down because the fuzzy side is a little bit thicker than the hard side and I wanted to avoid the back of the mirror hitting these metal uh, uh, rectangular plates on the cell. So so here's the first one to go on. And I'm going to place it radially and I have it placed right up against the edge of this rectangular piece of metal. There you go. The next one will be again fuzzy side down because that's the thicker side. And this I'm mounting in this direction. But then again, right up against the very edge of that metal re rectangle. So there's one there. And I'll do that for all other five spokes. Okay, so far I've installed two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven Velcro pads. And so I only have 
one more to go. And that's in that position. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean my mirror. I first off start with blowing the mirror off with an ear syringe. And I've, I've, I have my cotton balls here and I've also made up triangular squares of paper towels for wicking the large drops away. So I'll first start with pouring distilled water on the mirror. And I'm just using the pressure of the wetted cotton ball on the mirror. Now I'm going to rinse the mirror, so I'm going to place it up on its edge and just rinse it with distilled water. Use my blower's bulb to get the larger droplets of water off the mirror. And for any remaining droplets of water, I use my triangle paper towel to wick away the droplets. Okay, most of the small droplets are disappearing, so I think I'll just let the mirror air dry for a bit. So now the mirror is perfectly clean, and I'm also going to wipe the back side of the mirror off so that the velcro adheres well to it. Okay there's the finished clean mirror so now I have to just put it back into the mirror cell. Here you can see the location where I put the velcro pads and so before I put the mirror in the cell, I'm going to have to take these plastic pieces off. Okay, so I've taken the plastic pieces off and 
If you can notice, I've placed those Velcro pads as close as I could get them to the original pad location, um, but that pad location is raised, so I just got it as close as I could here, and I got it as close as I could in this direction. Okay, now it's time to put the mirror back in its cell. And for my mirror, I'm going to line up the, the marks on the side of the mi mirror, on the edge of the mirror, with the original black RTV marks. So there we go. Yeah, the mirror seems to be pretty even all around in this direction. So I don't think I have it tilted. Next we attach the rubber O-ring plate. And to center it, I usually turn this counterclockwise to set it. Yeah, there it's set. And so then I can turn it clockwise. I'm going to crank this down pretty tight so that I'm sure that the back of the mirror and the Velcro strips are, are firmly pressed together. So that's pretty tight there, but I wouldn't want to keep that primary mirror that tight. So I'm going to back it off again. And I'm going to just tighten it enough so the rubber o-ring makes contact and doesn't put too much pressure on the mirror. So that's right in that position. Now we are going to lock down the o-ring plate using the set screws. One goes here. And I'll just make it snug for now. And the other goes here. Okay, so I have that pretty tight, that one. So I need to go back to this one and tighten it to the same pressure. Yeah, that's very good. Next, I'm going to reinstall the hold down clips. These are only used for safety purposes. I'm going to keep them 
all the way in the up position uh, because they're really with the velcro strips there's there's no way the uh, mirror is going to fall out including the rubber o-ring adapter in the center so I raised them up all the way just as a safety precaution so here's the second one Again, I have this one raised as, as far as it will go, and I'm tightening it down now. Now for the third and final hold down clip. So I have this all the way up as far as it will go. So we have the hold down clips all installed now. I noticed that my small primary collimation screws are very much extended. So they're very much forward and clockwise and so I'm going to loosen those, all three of them, and so that the, the mirror cell rests further back in towards the back of the telescope optical tube. And, and I'm going to loosen them to the point where they're, they're just peeking out from this back plate here. So I'm going to try to get them as far in this direction as I can. So here you can see how I've uh, backed those primary adjustment screws way down so that they just extend above this back plate. And I've done that for all three locations. Okay, what I'm going to do now is mark the positions of the screw holes on the mirror cell. So this is for the small one. And this is for the large one here. Next we need to reinstall the three springs for the hold down screws and uh, the hold down primary screws and what I discovered is that they don't fit inside the recesses of the on the back of the mirror plate um, so I'm going to use silicone glue, you know, to hold those in place, just for during reassembly. So there's one spring. There's a second spring. And 
there's the third. So I'll let those dry a while. And I did that just so they didn't uh, fall over sideways when I put the primary mirror cell back in its place. Now with the springs glued in position, I'm going to pick up the mirror cell and I'm going to use the marks I made for Yeah, so that's pretty close there. I'm going to use my flashlight. And I see I have to rotate the mirror cell just slightly. Yeah, just a tad more. So that's pretty good right there. Now we need to uh, put the hold down primary collimation screws in place. Okay, so we'll start with this one. I just inserted the hold down screw and it takes a four millimeter hex tool. So I'll tighten it down just until it's a little snug. And then next I'll rotate the mirror and install the next hold down primary collimation screw. just until it's snug. And the third one goes here. Again, just till it's snug, like that. Next, we reinstall the baffle tube. Yeah, it's seated correctly right now, and so I can turn it clockwise to tighten it. I just snugged it up. So there's the baffle tube installed. If you look inside the optical tube, you'll notice a seam that runs down inside it. And so that seam here needs to match up with the this indentation here. The ind indentation is shown better here, okay? So I'm lifting the optical tube. I'm putting that seam over that indentation. I checked the holes all around the base of the telescope and it's they line up. Next we need to reinstall the eight uh, screws for holding the optical tube assembly.
and then we do the same for the other five screws all around. Next I need to install the focuser tilt plate. So I just spin it on and snug it up. Next I need to install the focuser. So there the focuser is installed. For collimating, I use a LaserMax TLC laser. That's a two inch laser and it has a reticle pattern. The first step of my collimation process is to adjust my focus tilt plate with the uh, six adjustment screws that are here, here, and here. And so I use my laser collimator and I put the center dot on the center of the secondary mirror as I adjust these and my telescope came without the secondary um, center dotted but when I had it apart I, I, I added a black magic marker dot to the very center of the secondary um, and so the first step again is using this laser collimator to adjust the collimation screws of the focuser tilt plate.